Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got a bit on weather. We'll see some infrared eye candy in deep space, and we'll see a study where the scientists start talking like I do. Of course, we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, where things have been pretty calm, and they've stayed that way. The small solar flares we were seeing disappeared the last 24 hours. Corona hole solar wind is here, moderately fast and producing low-level geomagnetic storms, but again, low level, and the event is ending today. Leaving us going back to watching the eruptive threats. The truth there is that the plasma filaments are absent in the low latitude and earth facing position, and the sunspots for the most part are singles, small or not magnetically complex, or a combination of those. Right now, the southern incoming group, bottom left, it's got the most complexity, it's turning in here this week. How about some good news? Folks, after the six-pointer struck Ethiopia, things have gone quiet, both at the African Rift and Santorini volcano in Greece. Closest there is well to the north. Hopefully that means it's all quieting down, not that magma chambers are full. Weather warning for the central U.S., brutal cold set to invade again, seriously dangerous wind chills, and at the freeze line, got those horrible ice storms in the forecast. Nothing's worse than ice. It's coming again this week. Let's go to some eye candy up next, where the name of the game today is Appreciating Infrared Light. It's the latest to get an upgrade in astronomy, and few things are more revealing. We'll begin with the fiery rose shape of NGC 2040, where infrared reveals an incredible amount of complexity within the dense core of the Nova Remnant. As if that wasn't beautiful enough, invisible light, the space rose, is basically invisible can say something similar at RCW 38, except this time the bright heart of the star-forming region is easily visible to our eyes, but if I can zoom back out a bit momentarily, the field, the dusty cocoon, was not visible. It's only by seeing through other perspectives we're going to figure everything out, true both here and outside astronomy. But now it's time for the top story, and this one's going to grab a bunch of you if you've been paying attention. What do I keep saying over and over? It's actually been a decade of me saying it now. Earth has been taking two big a hits from space weather. Earth's magnetic field, in the middle of a pole shift, is letting too little do too much. Now, in their words, although this geomagnetic storm was not very strong, the ionospheric irregularities on this day resulted in a strong ionospheric scintillation. Blah, blah, several cycle slips and loss of satellite locks, the expanse of the space environment impact. Here was something, quote, rarely reported. Really, but I thought the geomagnetic storm was not very strong, like you said. They have ideas on how it could have gone down like that, but so did the observers. Look, I'm curious to know if you guys like the new issue of Observer Review. It was sent out last night, so check your email or the members page if you haven't seen it. Also curious especially what you thought of Observer Bot's first crack at science. And of course, plan your trip to come see us. Conference this weekend, big events regularly. Grab our books and much more. Come see us, and it starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.